What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 2008 Mini Cooper S R56. Today on the Cooper behind me, we're going to be covering how to replace your front brakes. This kit in front of us is one of the many available on FCPO.com. We have a set of Zimmerman rotors paired with some Akibono pads. Akibono is kind enough to include the new clips for the pads as well, where they sit in the caliper. To that kit, we have added the brake pad wear sensor, as well as some rotor set screws. That way you have everything you need to do this DIY. This will be pretty similar to your non-S models as well. So for those of you looking for just a general R56 front brake video, this is also going to be for you. A couple of things to note, if you're deciding to do brakes or you're wondering if you need to do them, first and foremost, the sensor is a great tool to notify you when your brakes are due. Once the contact inside breaks, you'll have a light on the dash notifying you that the brakes are worn, so you want to consider replacing them. Another thing you can do is measure the thickness of the pads. We do sell special gauges that can measure them. Anything less than two millimeters, you want to replace them. But the easiest thing to really do is simply look, do a visual inspection. Look at the surface of the discs, look at the condition of the pads if you can through the wheel spokes. If you have a lip on the inboard or outboard side of the disc, then more than likely they're pretty worn. And under heavy braking, if you feel some pulsation, then more than likely they're warped. But that's not to say that it can't be uh, worn out control on bushings or end links or anything related to the suspension. So just a few things to keep in mind. Before we get started on this DIY though, let's take a look at some of the tools we're gonna need for this job. All right, my good people, for this job, you're gonna need a 17 mil socket for the lug bolts. We also have a 16, a T50, which is gonna be your specialty socket of the day, and a 13 mil socket. You can also substitute that for a wrench. Along with that, a thin 17 mil wrench is gonna be the trick to kind of hold the guide pins. If not, a thin set of needle nose pliers. A half inch or three eighths drive ratchet will work depending on what size sockets you're using. We have both, as well as torque wrenches for both sizes. In addition to that, we have our CTA piston compressor tool. This is great for the single piston style calipers. This is CTA 1465, highly recommend it. Caliper hanger hook to hang the caliper off to the side while we're working. If you don't have that, uh, bungee cord, zip ties, or even a coat hanger in case of emergency will do. Ply head screwdriver, hammer in case our rotors are stuck to our hub assembly. We have some brake clean, which is available on the site along with the Liquid Molly ceramic paste, which we use for every single brake video. Power tools make the job a little bit quicker. We have an electric impact, 3 8 drive ratchet, and a drill with a wire wheel attachment just to clean up any corrosion and rust. With that, my good people, let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. All right, my people, before we get started on this DIY, any car you're gonna be doing brakes on, it's always important to note the level of the brake fluid. Uh, this can be important because if you have an older car, let's say the brakes were low and worn down, maybe the brake fluid light came on just due to the pistons being so open. Uh, then someone may have topped it off. Now you go to compress the pistons to do your brake job, you're overflowing the reservoir. So just keep an eye on it. If it's too full and your brakes are pretty low, go ahead and pull some out, maybe using a syringe or a turkey base so that will not make it back into your kitchen. And then just go ahead and top it off once you've settled the car back on the ground. Press the brake pedal a few times so you can get a proper level reading. So just keep that in mind. You can always open up the cap. It's also not a bad idea to inspect the condition of the brake fluid and see if you may want to consider doing a flush while you have the car up in the air. But with that, now let's head over to the driver's side and get started on this DIY. All right, my good people. To get started, we have four 17 millimeter lug bolts to remove. If you're not using an impact to zap them off, make sure you break the lug bolts free with the car on the ground first using your breaker bar, then jack it up and remove the lugs the rest of the way. All right, now we have our wheel off. We have a better view of what we're working with. And as you can see, these are pretty crusty. They have a lip, a giant lip on the outboard and inboard. Same thing on the backside. The pads, they're just under two millimeters, so they're definitely worn down, but the sensor hasn't been triggered yet. So your brakes can get to this point without them necessarily being needing to be replaced just yet. But this car is pretty dang close. I bet if it drove a little bit more, it would have to get done. So with that, we're gonna start with the sensor first, my good people. We're gonna go ahead and get that off. This sensor is located always on the inboard pad, as you can see here. You can spin the disc around, you can see the disc moving here. Sensor is on the inboard side. Because we are replacing everything today, and I do recommend you replace the sensors as well, we're just gonna go ahead and pry that out using a small flathead screwdriver. In this case, the sensor came out fine. Let's say this was an emergency situation, we needed to reuse it, it worked out no problem. 
Following the sensor, we're gonna go ahead and just get this old one out. And it's usually just held in by a couple rubber grommets all the way along the ABS speed sensor cable as they go to the same area. These are built into the cable, so the new one will have these little hooks as well, these little grommets. And then here, right by the front of the wheel well, typically you're gonna to wanna to remove the fender liner. You can see this car is missing it. Sometimes you can just weasel these out underneath the liner. You don't have to remove it. So keep that in mind. They have a bunch of plastic 10, uh, sorry, they have a bunch of plastic Phillips head rivets that hold in the wheel liners. And then typically two T30s up top. So with that, we can disconnect the sensor. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop the new one in now and just set it to the side. So with that, we'll go ahead. There is a shape to the inside of the plug here. They only go in one way. So just match them up. They'll key in nicely. And we can go ahead and close it. Pop that baby in. And we can route it back the same way the old one was. With that there, we're just gonna go ahead and let the end hang out for now. We're going to continue on with the brake pad and brake disc replacement. Next thing we're going to do is using the veins of the brake disc, we're going to take a small flathead screwdriver. If your calipers are nicely powder coated or painted or in just generally good shape, maybe wrap it in some painter's tape or a small towel. We're going to use the disc and the flathead screwdriver as a counter hold. And what we're going to do now is make sure that the disc itself is going to be able to come off, meaning that we want to make sure that that set screw is going to come out. So we're going to go ahead and grab our T50 and our 3 8 drive ratchet and try to break that free now. We have our T50 in here. We're gonna go ahead and set that to off. And beautiful, that's gonna come out no problem. We're gonna leave it on there for now. So now with the set screw loose, what we have next to work on is our actual caliper removal. So as you can see here, we have two 13 millimeter bolts. We're gonna use a thin 17 mil wrench to counter hold. A thin one is gonna make life easier. Uh, sometimes you don't need anything, you can use your fingers. It really depends on the condition of your car. Before we go ahead and kind of get all this off, these are pretty gunky from a prior leak that this car had. So I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of brake clean just so that we don't contaminate our new parts too, too much during install. Now with that, we're gonna take our 17 mil wrench and go ahead and break these 13 mil bolts free. Typically, we recommend you replace these. However, you can reuse them. Just make sure to clean off the old thread locker wire wheel them a little bit, apply a little bit of medium strength when you go to reinstall them, which is what we will do today. This car is gonna be taken apart for other videos, so we're not gonna waste any new hardware on it just yet, as this is all gonna to have to come apart again. So as you can see, we got the other bolt off. And right, now we can work the caliper off. We're gonna use our old outboard pad and we're gonna place that back in the caliper. And we're gonna use that to compress our piston using our piston compressing tool. Sorry if you see me stopping a bunch, this whole thing is covered in axle grease, uh, which is making it very difficult to work on. So we're stopping to clean up and clean up our tools and, and keep on going here. All right, piston's going in nice and beautifully, super easy. You may even be able to do this by hand if you're feeling up to it, but these old hands ain't got nothing left in them, baby. You're gonna wanna go until the piston is fully seated and it's gonna stop on its own. No need to force anything here. And again, you could be much more cautious with these calipers if yours are in nice shape. Lay a towel down before you rest them over the brake disc or the caliper carrier. But as you can see in our case, we are far from that situation here. Okay, tool bottomed out. That means we're done. I'm just undoing this for the other side for later. And as you can see, these pads were pretty well loved. So definitely worn, definitely ready for replacement. On top of that, you'll notice that the inboard pad has a different cutout than the outboard. That's because this one has the notch in it for the brake pad wear sensor. So make sure when you install your new pads, the one with the hump, which is the easiest way to see how different they are, goes on the inboard, outboard is the one without the hump. I'm gonna take a moment to clean up some of the grease in this caliper. And then we're gonna use our caliper tool to hang it off to the side. With our caliper all a little bit more cleaned up, we're gonna take our caliper hanging hook and we're gonna go ahead and hang it off the coil. That'll keep any weird tension or stress off the soft line. 
And now we can work on removing the copper carrier bracket. Because Akibono included the new uh, shims or anti-rattle springs, we're gonna go ahead and just pop these off now because we're not gonna be needing them. These only go on one way, so don't worry about mixing them up. This is also a great time to scrape any little bit of crud off the carrier and use the car as the your, kind of your holder here. Now with our copper carry bracket cleaned up and ready to go, this is also a great time to inspect your guide pins. In this case, this one's nice and free. And this one is completely seized up, which is not gonna be great. So what you can try to do is get them off and re-grease them up. We're gonna go ahead and try that on this bottom one here. All right, we're gonna leave these guide pins out for now. Once we tilt this uh, caliper carry bracket over, we can really clean it out and get some fresh grease in there. But from there on, we have two 16 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper bracket to the uh, knuckle here. So we're gonna go ahead and get those off. And same thing with these, my good people. Mini recommends you replace them. If you're gonna reuse them, just clean up the threads, make sure they're in good shape before you reinstall them. We're doing more work to this car, so these are gonna come off again. So we're gonna save the new hardware for the time being, but the hardware is linked in the description below should you wanna go ahead and replace yours now. With these out, we can go ahead and set those to the side for cleanup. And we'll also take our moment, a time to re-grease these guide pins and carry bracket before they go back on. Next on our list, we have the T50, which we left on earlier. We're gonna go ahead and remove that the rest of the way. And in this case, our brake disc is coming off, which is very fortunate for us. But if yours was a little bit stuck on, thread a lug bolt back in, and then use your favorite percussive instrument to knock it free before you go ahead and take it off the rest of the way. With that, we're gonna grab our wire wheel, clean up this hub assembly a little bit, and get ready for a new disc. With that, we're gonna replace these gloves. We don't wanna get our fingerprints all over our new zinc-coated discs because you don't want to hit this with brake clean, unlike a traditional raw brake disc. So it's just something to keep in mind. With that cleaned up, we'll hit it with a little bit of uh, brake clean. We just really want to get the big chunky stuff off. That way we don't get our new disc seized on there immediately. And then because we live in New England, we're going to use some Likomali ceramic paste on these, even though Zimmerman doesn't call for any of it because we do live in New England and this car will see salt and snow, this will eventually rust. So this will help us get these off nice and easy the next time we have to do this job. We're gonna grab our T50 and snug it up. The torque spec for this is gonna be 27 Newton meters or just nice and snug. Don't need to go too crazy on it as it is a tiny set screw. So with that, our set screw is a little bit tired. This hub is not in the best shape, if I'm being totally honest, which is why we're doing more work on this car later on. But for now, we're gonna keep that set screw in there. See if we can snug it up using the electric ratchet a bit. That'll be good for now. Now with that, my good people, we're gonna get our caliper carry bracket back on. Before we put on our caliper carrier bracket, we're gonna go ahead and pop our new anti-rattle clips in. They really only go in one way. Just make sure they're lined up properly. They have two little tabs on the inside that help align it. And that's pretty much it, my good people. There we go. Now we can go ahead and feed this over. We have our bolts that we've cleaned up already. Now we're gonna go ahead and torque both of those down to 110 Newton meters. So let's set up the torque wrench and get that going. With that, now we're gonna go ahead and get our pads in. I like to use a little bit of the ceramic paste on the ears when they go into the little anti-rattle clip uh, brackets. You don't need a whole bunch. You don't wanna just smear onto the pad while you're driving. You just need a little bit to keep them from seizing in there just like so. And we're gonna feed them on. Get the ears popped in. Now we can go ahead and do the outboard pad. Same thing, pop it into the ears. There we go. 
I like to use a little bit of paste here on the outboard side of the caliper where they back up against the back of the pad. That always helps them stay from chattering and kind of getting stuck to the caliper over time. Then we can go ahead and slide this baby over. There we go. Now we're gonna take our two 13 millimeter bolts, which we have cleaned up and added a little bit of blue thread locker to them. And now we're gonna go ahead and torque those down to 35 Newton meters. There we go. And now with that, we can get our brake pad wear sensor fed into the inboard pad. There we go. Close the bleeder cap cap, if you will, a little rubber cap there. I'll keep that in place. Make sure that your cable didn't come undone while you were moving it around or working on the rest of the brakes. If you fed it in earlier, like we did, yeah, fix this bottom one a little bit. All right. And we're going to go ahead and throw our wheel back on, lining up our lug bolt holes. Now we're just going to use the impact to snug them up evenly so that the face of the wheel is even to the face of the disc, and then we'll lower it down and torque it up properly. Let's set her down on the ground and do it up, my good people. All right, with the car on the ground, we're gonna torque these down. All right, my good people. And with that, that is gonna conclude this DIY for today. Overall, a really easy and straightforward job on the R56. Again, we're working on an S model today, but the steps are gonna be the same for your non-S vehicles as well. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, leave those in the comment section below. And if you like this DIY and you wanna see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.